My name is Dr. Troy Holder. I am a board certified surgeon. Uh, I recently joined practice here at JEH Equine Hospital in December and uh, I've since had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Moulton and um, uh, using Thrive Feed. Um, my first experience with it was uh, with one of our quite expensive uh, quarter horse yearlings uh, who had colic surgery and a significant gastric impaction, um, just refused absolutely to digest food posts uh, at least for about two weeks. I was kind of at my wits end, willing to try anything, and I got my hands on some Thrive Feed and she, she absolutely never colicked again. Um, I think the proof is in the, the experience with this product. Um, right now I put uh, all of my colics on it, uh, post-op. It's the only concentrate I carry in the ICU barn. Uh, anything with gastrointestinal problems, uh, surgical or medical, we see a lot of displacements. Uh, that is all they eat um, uh, after admission into the hospital until they're discharged. Uh, I actually had the not so fortunate pleasure of actually working on Mr. Mullen's own horse um, who came in uh, quite critical condition with a a mesodiverticular band from uh, her cecum um, did have about 10 feet of strangulated uh, distal small intestines, lots of particular ecumotic hemorrhages, edema, uh, definitely not an area that was resectable. Uh, did have good motility at surgery, but she was very toxic, and um, we put her back together, uh, and she responded beautifully. Um, all she ate uh, post-op was uh, Thrive Feed. Um, she probably went through at least 30 to 40 pounds a day. Yeah, all she ate was Thrive Feed post-surgery. Uh, and uh, she had a fall at her side. She was, um, uh, I'd say about 10 to 14 days post-fall in. Um, she never uh, stopped her lactation. The foal um, always had adequate nutrition. Um, kind of something I really never seen before in a horse. I mean, she really never looked back. She never showed any signs of discomfort. And you know, considering that she had so uh, ten feet of you know questionable small bubble, usually I go a lot slower with these horses as far as feeding uh, any hay. Uh, but from the day after, twelve hours after surgery, I put the five in front of her. She's never shown any signs of colic. Um, her heart rate steadily came down, her toxemia cleared up, and I really can't believe what she looks like um, two weeks, uh, sorry, four weeks post-surgery. Um, and I think the, the proof is in, in using it, and that's what I've experienced. Um, I mean, I've listened to all the science and it makes perfect sense to me, um, but I've been very impressed by the results, and uh, as I said, I, that's all I use right now and that's probably all I would want to use from now because uh, I see the, the proof in the pudding. Thank you, sir. No now Dr. Holder talks about alcohol production in the cecum from the fermentation of starch from normal horse feed. Um, and, I mean, I've had long conversations with Mr. Moulton about this and it kind of m makes perfect sense. You know, every time we surgeons go into a horse, um, you know, uh, exploratory laparotomies and you have to decompress both the especially the cecum um, the, 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 the the aroma that comes out it's almost pungent it's an alcohol type based um, product obviously being produced there and um, you know the physiology behind you know fermentation and everything is if you can you know cut down the alcohol production it surely can only do the horse better because we, we all know what you know, excessive amounts of alcohol in the bloodstream will do. So um, I think you know there's a lot of merit behind um, the design of the feed and obviously what it does in decreasing both gas production and alcohol production in the horse. Thank you. Mm -hmm.